Welcome back to the Mets office guys, Tyler here as we continue our week on energy system interplay. So uh, we did a bit of an intro earlier on, we did our continuous sports yesterday and now we're going to look at intermittent sports where it does get a bit more tricky um, when we take that steady state out, there's a lot more variables going on. But it's still going to come down to what we always talk about, intensity and duration to determine relative contribution. So the thing is most intermittent sports we're going to talk about, be it um, football, netball, basketball, whatever it is, they're, they're going to be two hour type events, one hour, two hour. We have to be able to, we're providing energy for the body for that one hour, two hour. So it's going to be overall, it's an aerobically dominant event. Um, regardless of the fact that we have bursts in intensity, the duration makes it an aerobically dominant event. We know that, we just want to talk about what changes we're going to see throughout. So what I've, I've written up on the board, um, our three energy systems, because when we talk about energy system interplay, we want to talk about what's going on with each energy system. And I've written up a bunch of words to talk about what will happen in intermittent sports. So I've got bench, many if we're on the bench, we might be standing, walking, jogging, running, sprinting, or some sort of jump, um, if we're reaching for an intercept, whatever it might be. So they're going to be a combination of moves that we, we change all the time that's going to determine these factors. So what I'd say, bench, standing, walking, Clearly, they are very low intensity activities, aerobically dominant, that's fine. When we increase intensity to a jog, to a run, to a sprint, or a jump, that's when we're going to start to see changes in our anaerobic contributions during those periods. Ideally, for these very high intensity activities, if we want to sprint or jump to that most effectively, our ATP PC system is the most explosive energy system. It's going to allow us to sprint the fastest, jump the highest, the most explosive movements. So ideally, if, if in a, our team sport we sprint, we're going to want to say the ATP PC increases contribution, which allows us to do that sprint. But a team sport, again, we said we've been out there for a long time. So this key here, PC stores. Do we have our PC stores available? So you need to think contextual. Have you, is the game just started? Is it the first effort of the game? Yes, good, ATP PC. Have you just come off the bench? Yes. Are you in a position where you've been able to stand still, have a passive recovery? That's going to be crucial. So we get us to um, contrast a goalkeeper and a centre in netball quite often. So we want to think across these words. We'll, we'll ignore bench here. So we talk about within a, a passage of play. We're not going to be on the bench. The difference, the key difference, is going to be that the goalkeeper is going to get more time in these standing and walking than the centre is. So the centre is going to be jogging, running, sprinting, pretty much continuously. So almost no passive recovery. The goalkeeper, they're going to be short sprints, jumps, and standing and walking while they wait at the other end. So that's going to change our interplay a little bit. Over a period of time, both are going to be aerobically dominant. I'm going to say we're going to see more uh, increased contribution from anaerobic glycolysis for a centre player, right? When they increase their intensity to a run or a sprint. They're constantly moving, no passive recovery. We're going to see not a whole lot of change from the ATP PC system. First drive of the game, um, as we come back after quarter time, half time, yes, but generally not so much. Our goalkeeper can sprint, jump, explosive movements, um, the ball clears, stand and walk. PC replenishment during that passive recovery. Come back, sprint, jump. We see that increased contribution from ATP, PC for those explosive mo movements. If the ball is stuck down that end for an extended period of time, we might still see that PC depletion. Increased contribution to anaerobic glycolysis. Still aerobically dominant overall. Now we might extend that out. A basketball player. Um, a basketball player is not really going to have much passive recovery while on the court. So while they're on the court, five minutes, let's say a five minute passage of play. Five minute passage of play means it's going to be aerobically dominant. But we have we run up and down the court. We do some sprints, jumps for rebounds. Those those increases in intensity, you're going to see an increased contribution from anaerobic glycolysis during those periods. We have timeouts, we have bench, that's when we might see some passive recovery, which will allow uh, one or two big efforts with that ATP PC system as a dominant provider. When we get to maybe a, a, an AFL match, modern AFL match, if you watch that, players almost never stop while they're on the field. Big field to cover. All right, so a lot more probably in this range, jogging and running, so not so explosive. So we're going to steady state, aerobically dominant as we jog. Again, we're going to see increases in contribution from anaerobic glycolysis during as we change the intensity. Go to a sprint, go to a faster run. Um, 
if we look back at AFL maybe in the 70s where a full forward might just stand around in the goal square, right? An all-out lead, mark the ball, kick a goal, walk back to the goal square. That would be a really good example we can talk about aerobically dominant overall, but big increase in contribution from ATP, PC, passive recoveries allow that PC replenishment. Modern day football, not a lot of passive recovery. We're gonna see a lot more increases and decreases from that anaerobic glycolysis. We might be able to talk about time on the bench, half time, quarter time for that PC replenishment. Um, so I guess our point is, intermittent sports, long duration so overall aerobically dominant but we are seeing changes in contributions from these other energy systems and which ones are going to be we're going to depend on these sort of movements have we had time for pc replenishment are we talking about anaerobic glycolysis if we're moving more continuously with lots of variations in our intensity uh, any questions on, on what we've done so far this week remember shoot those through to us otherwise we'll talk to you later